How do we fight a monster that doesn't exist? Roger's block doesn't exist is our claim. How do we know that's true? When we battle that monster at every writing session, how can we even claim it doesn't exist? It does, doesn't it? Or does it? Maybe this second episode about Writer's Block can help. Welcome to The Right Focus, a podcast for writers at all levels, headed up by M.A. Lee, with the assistance of Remy Black and Edie Runes, all from Writer's Inc. Books. Our focus is productivity, process, craft, and tools. For this and other episodes can be found on therightfocus.blogspot.com. Write to us at winkbooks at aol.com. Our podcast episodes last as long as it takes to fix a quick dinner, drive a short commute, or take a brisk walk. We're bookcasting with Think Like a Pro by M.A. Lee. With Think Like a Pro by M.A. Lee, copyright 2017, revised 2018. In this episode, we continue to tackle every writer's bugbear. Only we have a problem. There's no such thing as writer's block. That's chapter five of Think Like a Pro. One simple injunction, writer's block doesn't exist. And yet much worse than the claim of writer's block. In the last episode, we looked at writer's refusal and offered many solutions. Now we're on to the greater monster of writer's procrastination. Much worse than simple refusal. Writer's procrastination is worse but it's also one that, we sh- one that we should kick ourselves for having. This is a problem that we can control, just as we can control refusal. Unlike refusal, however, procrastination requires a change of our mindset, and your mindset can be a bugbear to change. What has to change? First, while procrastination is defined as putting, is defined as putting off something until a later time, you have to understand that true procrastination is not just delaying and delaying. We delay things all the time. When we come home after a stressful day of work and say, my brain is fried, I'll balance my bank account tomorrow. That delay means that we do it. We do get to the task we delay, usually within a couple of days. Delay is also what a teenager does when he won't stop banging on the drums for the five minutes it will take to carry out the trash. That delay is a touch of rebellion. True procrastination not only delays a project, but delays it for so that the deadline passes. We then blow through a second deadline. And even if we set a third deadline, we don't put impetus behind our work on a project. If some outside force interferes with your writing time, preventing your finishing by the first, second, or even third deadline, and you are still working steadily on the project, or even third deadline, and you are still working steadily on the project, then procrastination is not your problem. You are not in a writing slump. You've got an outside force interfering. Call your problem what it is, and then try to fix it. Some outside forces can't be fixed. If your income depends on an outside job that are your short-term and long-term goals, do not take out a bank loan and a year off from work to pursue your writing dream. Be realistic, for heaven's sakes. And don't let someone else tell you to take out a bank loan and take a year off. That's idiocy. They're not the ones having to pay the loan. True procrastination is fear-driven. Is fear-driven. Yes, fear-driven, and we call it writer's block to keep from admitting our fears and confronting them. Confronting them is easy. Admitting them, it's been called half the battle. Our fears relate to the end result. If we didn't fear that result, we would grab the project and finish it in a timely manner. Try it in a timely manner. Try these cure-alls first to determine if you have refusal or procrastination or something much worse. Go write an email just saying hello. I was thinking about you. I think we need to get together for coffee. And don't back out. Go for the coffee. Or write an angry poem and burn it. yourself permission to make mistakes and write drivel. And burn it. Don't back out. Spindle it up and put a match to it. Or sit in front of a keyboard, toss out a bunch of words, and hit delete. Don't back out. Delete. The key to all three of these is that they serve as proof that you can still put words on your muse will be appalled at the deletion. Ignore her weeping. Your imp of mischief will shout with glee. Laugh with him. Celebrate words that don't have a purpose. Offend that pesky muse. Tell her who is in charge. You are. 
Writers don't wait on inspiration. We have jobs to do. We're learning to wait on inspiration. We have jobs to do. We're learning to think like a pro. We're after a new advent for our writing. Pros have deadlines. They have to put out product, no matter what, or they don't get paid. While they know their necessary daily output, they also schedule in a cushion that covers any disruptions that are un- every day. Always remembering that rewriting is available if it's boring or useless or drivel. Pros use models and patterns that others have developed. They have a process that works for them, but they are perfectly willing to shake up that process if they realize changes are necessary. Essentials, whether it's the structure it's the structure that controls a revelatory series of events like plot, are the essentials of specific sets of characters help writers understand the size of the project, the major units of the project, and the smaller elements inside each major unit. Pros consider the major structure and the small and the smaller essential elements that turn individual words into completed projects. When the old patterns aren't working, they seek out new ways to build their story's foundations. Pros don't stop. They keep going, just maybe in a different direction. Words aren't the problem of writer's block. Writer's block is the project we're working on and our attitude toward that project. We have to diagnose the problem of writer's block to determine the solution. I think this barrier or wall between us and our writing can actually fall into three distinct writer's maladies. We've talked about refusal, and now we're on to procrastination. There's a third. Here, let's take a diagnostic quiz. Select one of the following problems. A. You constantly escape from your current project, chasing distractions that prevent your bum from sitting in a chair. B. You delay the hard parts of your writing in order to pursue other writing projects. Or C. You keep yawning when you should be writing. Select the best description of your writing problem. A. You find yourself with writing time, but you deliberately place yourself far from your writing space. B. You never want to show your writing to anyone because it's not finished. Or C. When you schedule your writing time, you just stare at the screen with no words in your head. Select the best mindset that replicates your inner critic. A. I have more and more things to do before I can begin writing. B. I keep hearing voices from my past telling me that my writing will never be good enough. C. I don't need to learn anything about writing. These are my words. I won't change them for anyone. If you selected A for two or all three of the symptoms, then you actually have writer's refusal. If you answered with two or three as B, you have writer's procrastination. If you landed primarily in C, you have the worst condition, writer's inertia. How do we know if we have procrastination instead of refusal or inertia? Okay, let's look at a few more examples. Do you have a closet filled with manuscripts that you've never shown anyone? And that are Oramo each year for the past seven years, but you've never gone back and fixed those manuscripts for publication. Have you reached the hard part of your story? jumped past to write other parts, and never come back to finish the hard part? Have you gotten excited about what you're writing, only to lose that excitement a half hour later because you you remember someone saying it's not any good? Are you worried that your writing is not good enough because you want it to be perfect? Did you say you need to write, but three hours later you're still a couch potato, and even more of a couch potato another hour after that? While several bloggers have classified her top three fears are five worst fears are ten reasons for writer's block defined. All of those listed fears actually boiled down to just two. Only two. That should make them easy to overcome, shouldn't it? Nope. Remember, I said confronting the fear is the easy part. Easy part. Admitting them is half the battle. Admission is all about your perspective, your mindset. Admission is wanting a goal more than you want the fear. When you admit your writing fear, then you can overcome it. And overcoming procrastination requires a change in your mindset, one small at a time. Remember, one small increment at a time. We can change our mindset by setting deadlines and writing every day. 
Those two commitments, deadlines and daily writing, nulla die sinilinia, will help us keep our impetus as we pursue our goal of professionalism. Our mindset requires devotion, and Roger's procrastination requires more devotion to overcome. It's a real beast. What are the two fears that drive true procrastination? The first is fear of failure. When we're working on a heart project, something near and dear to us, we may fear us. We may fear that no one will like except what we have to say. Do we fear that no one will buy our writing? Send that manuscript out to traditional publishers and agents. A lucky few of us may be snapped up by editors and agents. Most of us are star-crossed. We face rejection from the trads. Never fear. Never fear. Indie publishing awaits. When we do our job as writers to put the best product before the public, yet the trads say, not this time, but do try us again, then indie publishing is the best route for us. That's what I did. Defeating the fear of failure is simple. If one mountain in creative people look for other options, only your definition of success matters. As long as we keep writing, we haven't failed. Redefine success into terms that you can control, not terms that are dependent on luck or on someone else's point of view. After all, what is it that you want to achieve? Money. After all, what is it that you want to achieve? Money, fame, those are dependent on hard work and luck. You can't control luck. Do you want to support yourself with your writing? That takes an investment of time, the several years necessary to complete several projects and reach the 20 or 30 books necessary for ability. If you remain devoted to your writing, that kind of success will come. Do you want to reach out to others and influence them? Write truth in the best way that you know how? People respond to truth. Your writing will speak to some people and they'll buy it. If not many buy it, Marketing may be the problem and not the on writing time looking for various ways to market the book. Yes, this is writing, just as creating and adhering to a business ledger is part of the writing business. Marketing and budgeting are not fun, but are necessary. Be a professional and handle the necessaries along with the fun. The other top professional and handle the necessaries along with the fun. The other top of fear that belongs to true procrastination is fear of judgment. Criticism can be worse than fear of failure, which is rejection. Let's distinguish between critiques and criticism. Well-intentioned critiques point out flaws, telling us their bad thoughts about our work. Some traditional editors will write a critique with the rejection letter. Take these to heart. Study them. When editors mention ways to improve our writing, we've managed a wonderful thing and touched some part of them. Well-intentioned critiques point out holes in the plot, faults with, conti plot, faults with continuity, illogical actions and reactions of our characters, and info dump, a serious crime. From friends and critique group members to reviewers, these critiques may seem harsh, but are designed to improve the writing. Thank these people. They want to help you. They are helping you. Critics great without giving hope for improvement. We have all heard horror stories of evil troll editors who reject with such comments as Your writing is atrocious or Never send us any more of your work. These are sad people who are interested only in spreading personal misery. Why else would, else would they write something beyond the formula of We're sorry but this writing does not meet what we're looking for. For those of us who have been burned, we may want to say writer's block when we actually should say evil troll editors. Readers can become trolls. Wannabe writers who never accomplish anything can become trolling, can become trolls. The worst trolls are the fellow writers who are struggling with their own fears. You don't have to go far into writers' message boards before you will read about bad reviews, sabotage, and other icky behavior. How do you deal with trolls? Some trolls delight in spreading their misery. They, their misery. they delight in causing pain. Edgar Allan Poe calls such behavior the imp of the perverse, the little demons inside us that enjoy creating painful problems for others. These little demons may call themselves tricksters, but they are nothing like coyote of Native American myth. They have an evil myth who has been classified as a trickster, but is actually a shapeshifter pretending to do good while actually working for evil. 
These trolls, along with the ones who tell us they could write a better book but never have, are the ones who tell us they figured out everything by page 20 of a 300-page book. These trolls delight in seeing our reactions. For the ones who say they could write a better book, or they have a book idea they want to share with us so we can write it, as if we need more ideas, offer to be their first reader. For the ones who tell us that they figured out the ending, or that all romance novels are the same, ask them if they enjoy Bond movies, or see a movie after they read the book. Those endings are expected. Ask the reasons that they stay for those movies. Listen to the answer. Hope they see the connection. Come forth to yourself when they do not see it, and walk away. For the shapeshifters, we must quietly remove them from our lives. Seriously, do we want seriously? Do we want such two faced people around us? They will suck creativity dry, and that may be the cause of our procrastination. Evil trolls destroy hope. Avoid them. Challenge the naysayers. Tell them watch me achieve my dream and know that they are too afraid of their own dreams to persuade of their own dreams to pursue them. When fear of failure or of judgment try to stop us, take a break from the creativity. Take a couple of writing sessions to analyze your fear. What is your specific fear? Do you think the work is beyond you? It is possible to tackle a bigger story than you realized. Try writing a small viewpoint, not multiple viewpoints. Maybe you think pacing is the problem. You need lessons on plot. Or you realize your characters are flat. Break off writing to take a course, continuing education, or a seminar. I've found online writing courses are a great help. Veteran writers who offer a wealth of courses. People with 20, not people who are one and done, are five books then I decided to teach. Masters like Holly Lyle and Dean Wesley Smith have completely different work and teaching processes and approaches. Maybe you fear that someone will point out mistakes, grammos and typos, then hire an editor. Fair warning, no one even then hire an editor. Fair warning, no one even in traditional publishing is 100% perfect. Perfection is never possible. Maybe the fear is a mistake in the story. Do your research. Go through your manuscript. Don't assume. Find out. People will gladly answer emails and phone calls. Thank them for in your book. Show up in person and you may get more answers. After the plague is controlled, of course. Create a master book to keep up with your every character who serves a role in every detail of setting. A master book helps writers control the story as it turns into a massive maelstrom. The writer has to control the chaos or maelstrom. The writer has to control the chaos or the chaos will control the writer. In the master book, each scene in each chapter needs a two-sentence summary. Write one or two sentences about situations and locations in each chapter. As you write each chapter, make a note of tidbits needed for continuity. Where did, where did people go? To see who? Do what? It can can be difficult to keep track of all that. The master book is a lifesaver for this. Note down any special twist you have planned. It helps you remember them. Also helpful are images or a collage or word pictures about settings and things in your settings and characters. Helps to keep track of location of various scenes. Finally, you are going to have people who are trolls. We have solutions for writer's refusal and writer's procrastination. The real monster, though, is writer's inertia. Join us for the next episode to discover the inertia monster's two manifestations and how, stations and how to beat it. Until then, write on. How do we fight a monster that doesn't exist? Writer's block doesn't exist is our claim. How do we know that's true? When we battle that monster at every writing session, how can we even claim it doesn't exist? It does, doesn't it? Or does it? Maybe this second episode about writer's block can help. Welcome to The Right Focus, a podcast for writers at all levels, headed up by M.A. Lee with the assistance of Remy Black and Edie Runes, all from Writers Inc. Books. Our focus is productivity, 
process, craft, and tools for this and other episodes can be found on the rightfocus.blogspot.com. Write to us at winkbooks at aol.com. Our podcast episodes last as long as it takes to fix a quick dinner, drive a short commute, or take a brisk walk. We're bookcasting with Think Like a Pro by M.A. Lee. With Think Like a Pro by M.A. Lee, copyright 2017, revised 2018. In this episode, we continue to tackle every writer's bugbear. Only we have a problem. There's no such thing as writer's block. That's chapter five of Think Like a Pro. One simple injunction 